Rabies is a viral disease that causes inflammation of the brain in humans and other mammals. Early symptoms can include fever and tingling at the site of exposure. These symptoms are followed by violent movement, uncontrolled excitement, fear of water, and inability to move parts of the body, confusion, and loss of consciousness. The time period between contracting the disease and the start of the symptoms is usually one to three months, but can vary from less than one week to more than one year. This period called incubation period. So, rabies incubation period is one to three months. But crucial is the first 10 days after exposure, after animal bite or other kind infected animal contact to human. Treatment after exposure can prevent the disease if given within 10 days. The rabies vaccine is 100% effective if given early and still has a chance of success if delivery is delayed. Once symptoms appear, the result is nearly always death. In rabies, the emphasis must be on post-exposure prophylaxis, initiated after a recognized exposure and before any symptoms or signs develop. Clinical stages of rabies. Stage 1. Incubation period. Incubation period lasts 20 to 90 days and no symptoms. Post-exposure prophylaxis is needed here. First 10 days is crucial after bite or contact to the virus. Stage prodrome. It comes after incubation period and lasts 2 to 10 days. Symptoms, fever, malaise, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, paresthesias, pain, or pruritis at the wound site. Encephalitic stage. Last two to seven days. Symptoms include anxiety, agitation, hyperactivity, bizarre behavior, hallucinations, autonomic dysfunction, and hydrophobia. Paralytic stage. Lasts up to 10 days. Symptoms. Flaccid paralysis in limbs progressing to quadriparalysis with facial paralysis. Coma stage. Up to 14 days. And after coma is death. If any suspicious contact happen between mammal, mostly dog, cat or other wild animal, rabies prophylaxis is needed. Since there is no effective therapy for rabies, it is extremely important to prevent the disease after animal exposure. On the basis of the exposure history and local epidemiologic information, the physician must decide whether initiation of post-exposure prophylaxis is warranted. Healthy dogs, cats and ferrets may be confined and observed for 10 days. PEP is not necessary if animal remains healthy. If the animal develops signs of rabies during the observation period, it should be euthanized immediately. Prophylaxis should be initiated without waiting for laboratory results. If an animal escapes after an exposure, it must be considered rabid, and post-exposure prophylaxis must be initiated unless proved otherwise. Although controversial, the use of post-exposure prophylaxis may be warranted when a person, for example small child or a sleeping adult, has been present in the same space as a pet and an unrecognized bite cannot be reliably excluded. Post-exposure prophylactics include local wound care, both active and passive immunization. It is important that current recommendations are followed very closely because minor deviations can lead to failure of prophylactic measures. Local wound care is essential and may greatly decrease the risk of rabies virus infection. Wound care should not be delayed 
even if the initiation of immunization is postponed pending the result of 10-day observation period. All bite wounds and scratches should be washed swiftly with soap and water. Devitalized tissue should be debrided, tetanus prophylaxis given, and antibiotic treatment initiated when you are indicated. All previously unvaccinated persons, but not those who have previously been immunized, should be passively immunized with rabies immunoglobulin, RIG. If RIG is not immediately available, it should be administered no later than 7 days after the first vaccine dose. After 7 days, endogenous antibodies are being produced, and passive immunization may actually be counterproductive. Rabies vaccine and RIG should never be administered at the same site or with the same synergy. Four 1 ml doses of rabies vaccine should be given intramuscularly in the deltoid area. The anterior lateral aspect of the tide also is acceptable in children. The first dose should be given as soon as possible after exposure. Filing that it should be given without further delay. The three additional doses should be given on days 3, 7 and 14. Pregnancy is not a contraindication of immunization. Glucocorticoids and other immunosuppressive medications may be interfere with the development of active immunity and should not be administered during PEP unless they are essential. Local reactions, pain, erythema, edema, and pruritus, and mild systemic reactions, fever, myalgia, headache, and nausea are common. Anti-inflammatory and antipyretic medications may be used, but immunization should not be discontinued. In the USA, it is recommended people receive one dose of human rabies immunoglobulin, HRIC, and four doses of rabies vaccine over 14 days period. People who have previously been vaccinated against rabies don't need to receive the immunoglobulin. Only the post-exposure vaccination on days 0 and 3. Prognosis. Vaccination after exposure is highly successful in preventing the disease. If unvaccinated humans, rabies is almost fatal after neurological symptoms have developed. How is rabies transmitted? Rabies virus is transmitted through direct contact, such as through broken skin or mucous membranes in the eyes, nose or mouth with sal saliva or brain nervous system tissues from an infected animal. People usually get rabies from the bite of rabid animal. It is also possible, but rare, for people to get rabies from non-bite exposures, which can include scratches, abrasions, or open wounds that are exposed saliva, or other potentially infectious materials from a rabid animal. Other types of contact such as petting a rabid animal, or contact with the blood, urine, or fecus of the rabid animal are not associated with uh, for risk and are not considered to be exposure of concern for rabies. Other modes of transmission, aside from bite and scratches, are uncommon. Inhalation of aerosolized rabies virus is one potential non-bite route of exposure. But except for laboratory workers, most people will not encounter an aerosol of rabid virus. What kind of animal did you come in contact with? Any animal can get rabies. The most common wild reservoirs of rabies are raccoons, skunks, pets, and foxes. Domestic mammals can also get rabies. Cat, cattle, and dogs are the most frequently reported rabies domestic animal in the United States. When to see a doctor? If you have been in contact with any wildlife or unfamiliar animal, particularly if you have been bitten or scratched, you should talk with a healthcare or public health professional to determine your risk for rabies or other illnesses. Wash any wounds immediately with soap and water. 
and then plan to see a healthcare provider. It's important to know that unlike most other animals that carry rabies, many types of bats have a very small teeth, which may have marks that disappear quickly. If you are unsure, seek medical advice to be safe. Remember that rabies is a medical urgency, but not emergency. Decisions should not be delayed.